Hey, 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 everyone. I'm Rosie with K15T, and welcome back to our Confluence Beginner Guide. If you've been here before, you already know what's up. Last time, we learned about creating pages and blogs, and we started using the editor a little bit. And for today, we'll be talking about elements and macros within Confluence. We'll cover what exactly they are, why you should be using them, and how to use them. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. So step one, what are elements? Elements are these little pops of pizzazz that you can add to your Confluence pages to help present your information in a cool way. When you think of a great piece of content, it's rarely these big blobs of text that catch your eye, because who wants to read that? We really crave content that's broken down and served on a ready-to-eat platter. And that's exactly where Confluence elements come in. They break your content into digestible little pieces that are also aesthetic. These elements make your pages look, well, simply better. And in turn, this will make your readers more likely to understand and enjoy your information. We already used a few elements in the last video, so let's go back into Confluence to take a closer look. Alrighty, so here we are back in Confluence. It looks pretty familiar now at this point. It's important to mention with elements that some of them are super simple and you might not even realize that it's an element. This would include headings and emojis, which are used on the regular basis. However, elements go a lot further than just that. So to add an element, we can go up to the toolbar right here and hit this little plus button. And then here we have this whole display of all the elements or macros, which we'll get into later, that are available for your Confluence. We can hit the view more button and we can go to this big browse menu that just shows us everything that's possible here. So we have multiple menus, formatting, confluence, content, media. We got a whole lot going on. For right now, I'll show you another way to add elements, which is if you just go back to your page and you hit that forward slash button. And this is just gonna give you a little mini menu of the things that are possible as well. And as soon as you start typing something, it will also suggest that. So let's say I want to add a date so I can just hit, you know, forward slash then D and then it's right there. It's just like a little search button, if you will. So let's go ahead and go through some of the elements. One of the most simple elements is the app mention feature, which you've probably also used already. This one's super simple. You just hit that app button and it will suggest the collaborators that you have on here and it will send them a notification that Maggie will be notified. We'll let them know that you've mentioned them. If you don't want to notify them, if you just want to put them on the page and not do that, then just hit don't notify and then look at that. So simple. Another super great element to use that's helpful is the date element. So you'll just hit that forward slash button twice as a shortcut, or of course you can go to the toolbar or you can select it from the mini menu. I always am using this pretty often, so then I just hit that forward slash button twice. And then it'll pop up with this little calendar. You can select whatever date you need. You can also do periods of time. So if I wanna say July 3rd through, let's say the 17th, we need to schedule company party. The status element is also really great here. It's a cute little label to add to your tasks or your sentences. And we use the status element in our content management to know when each project will be published. So if I wanna say something is in progress, like I'm working on this video right now, and then I'll just do forward slash add status. I see it here in the mini menu and I can say in progress current tutorial. So in that way, it's pretty simple. You can also customize these statuses to whatever color you want, to whatever word you want. It doesn't necessarily even have to be a status. It could also just be a little update or a little note that you want to put next to it. It could be whatever word you want. Next, we have the code snippet. Now, I'm no coder believe me, uh, but I can imagine this is a great element for those who work in technical roles because here you can actually pick the language of the code that you're using from this whole menu of languages that Confluence offers. Um, you'll just again hit that forward slash code snippet. There it is right there. And then um, you can see the shortcut right here is those three apostrophes. Alrighty, so let's talk about action items. Action items are these little check boxes where you can assign the task to another person just using the at mention. So if I wanted to say, hey, Maggie, go ahead and fill out those calendar invites, I can at mention her right here on the action item, which will assign the task to her, and then she can check off that box when it's done, which will then mark it as complete. So you can just check these boxes off like so, or uncheck them also like so. 
You may be asking yourself why Aziza is dark blue and Maggie's at mention is gray. So currently I'm logged in right now as Aziza. And so whoever you are as the user, your name will always pop up in this dark blue format instead of this light gray. And then it's just easier because when you're mentioned somewhere, your name will pop out on the page and you can see exactly where you are and you don't need to go searching through a list of a bunch of at mentions. Another good thing to know is that all tasks where you're at mentioned, such as this one, can be seen by going over to your profile picture and then then navigating down to tasks right here. And then if you click on that, it will give you an overview of all the tasks. So you see right here, order new equipment from that page that we were just on. Decisions is another really cool element. It's perfect for when you're in a meeting and a question is discussed and you just wanna put the decision on the page, it's clear and simple. So again, to do that, we'll just hit that forward slash, then decision, enter. You can add your decision just like that. And there you go. So the next one that I wanna talk about is the info panel. The info panel is great because it adds this really nice pop of color to your pages. Um, a perfect example of how to use an info panel is if you just want something to stand out. So to add an info panel right now, I'm just gonna to go to the toolbar. It's the second one right here. Maybe because it's so commonly used, probably, who knows. Um, and then you have here some presets. So if you wanted to add a little info section, if you wanted to add a note, if you wanted to add a little green check mark of, hey, you know, don't forget this, you can do that. However, what's also cool is you have this whole entire option to add whatever color you want in the background. You can add any sort of emoji that you want. So let's say I wanna add a little pros and cons list but I don't just want it to have a boring white background. So I can go over here to my layout section, which we learned about in the last video, and I can have two sides just like this. And then I can put pros right here and cons right here. And then I can also just go ahead and add that so it's an info panel in itself. Perfect, so now, um, what's also cool about info panels is I can make this a heading as well. So let's just make both of these headings. Cons, let's say cons is red. That just makes more sense, right? Pros, let's make it green. Of course, you could customize it to be whatever you want. So give pros a little smiley face and give cons a little sad face. And then in these panels, you can add whatever you want. You can add the bullet list. And then we can also configure our layouts so they look a bit different. We could even add another one over here. Our next element that we'll talk about is the divider element. Super simple, really couldn't get easier than this. It's just this little horizontal bar. If you have a little bit of text that you just wanna separate from something else, just like, so here up top, we talked about the info panel. I just wanna add a divider in there. And then we're talking about the divider right here. And after that, I want to just separate it a little bit, add the divider. Now, if that wasn't simple enough, you can go ahead and hit that hyphen symbol three times and boom, it's even easier. So you can just add them all day long. Now we are on to the next element. We are talking about the expand element. And this is just perfect for when you have a bunch of information that doesn't necessarily need to be at the first glance, but you still want it to be on the page and accessible for the reader. So in that case, you can say, read more information about this topic and you can just put like learn more and then you can put all of the text that you want to be connected to that. So for example, if you had a process for how to request vacation, you could put that into the expand macro and it could be like the vacation policy right here. And then underneath that, if someone wants to look at the vacation policy, they just pop that thing open. And when they're done with it, they can just put it away. But then you don't need to have the entire information at the first glance on the page. Moving on, we have the quote element, and this is perfect if you just have a lot of text and then you have a testimonial from somebody and you want it to stand out from the rest of the text. It'll give you this little gray bar over here at the side, so the quote just stands out really nicely and it just looks good if you're writing an article or a blog or anything like that. So we've talked about elements, now let's cover Confluence macros. Macros are a specialized version of elements designed to enhance Confluence's functionality, and they often require a more detailed setup compared to basic elements. So let's check out a few examples of macros. The first macro that we'll discuss is the table of contents macro. And so to insert this, we'll do the same thing as we did with elements, and we'll go over here to the plus menu in the toolbar, and we'll just search table of contents. 
And what this will do is this will display all of the headings in your page. So ideally you're gonna put this at the top of your page. So if somebody is reading it, then they can just see an overview of all of the headings that you have and they can click on the individual chapters as they need to. When you're setting up a macro, they'll also be a bit more complicated than setting up an element. You'll have this whole parameter thing on the side, which will just allow you to customize it a little bit. You can also choose how the information in the macro is displayed. If you want it to be a square bullet, if you want it to be numbered like chapters so you have all of those options i'm just going to go ahead and leave it as it is right now you can always come back and edit this later this isn't set in stone just like everything within confluence now the child page macro confluence pages as you probably know are organized in a hierarchy within each space that means that there are child pages and there are parent pages. And you can use the child pages macro to create a clickable list of pages nested under a page of your choosing. By default, the macro shows child pages of the page that you're editing. But if you need a different one, you can pick a parent page from somewhere else, even from another space. As with everything in Confluence, you can customize the appearance of your child page list by tweaking the parameters right here in the right side. Then there's the live search macro, which as you may have guessed, allows you to live search. This will add a little search box to your Confluence page. So when a user enters a term in the search box, Confluence will display the matching results as they type. This is super great if you're referencing other topics within a page and you wanna give users the opportunity to search related pages right from where they already are. Then you have the Jira issues macro. If your team is anything like ours at K15T, then your Confluence instance is connected to your Jira, and the Jira Issues macro can be used to search and display Jira issues in a list on the Confluence page. When adding the macro, you have full control to filter through and find exactly what you're looking for. You can select a project or multiple, or maybe you only want to see the ones with the to-do status to display. Everything is possible and fully customizable. You can even choose how you want it to display, if you want it to show up as a list, a card, an inline, or in the link itself. What's great is that this macro will update in real time, just like the child pages macro. So if a Jira issue status changes, it will also automatically display in the Confluence macro. You can also control exactly what fields you want this to display with the configure columns button over here. So if you just want the basic information, that's totally possible by simply unclicking the fields that you don't want to show up. These four macros that we talked about today are some of the most commonly used ones, but there are so many more. Jump into the Atlassian Marketplace to explore a bunch of other possibilities and what you can really do with macros. That's a wrap for today, folks. We've checked out the Atlassian Marketplace and what a vast world of possibilities that it offers. Plus, you should also feel confident now in understanding what elements and macros are, as well as how to use them within your Confluence site. In our next video, we're gonna build on all the knowledge that we've gained so far by talking about templates and blueprints within Confluence. Until then, feel free to let us know how you feel about Confluence so far by leaving a comment down below. And of course, while you're there, go ahead and hit those like and subscribe buttons so we can keep helping you and you can focus on what you do best. Thanks for watching.